be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we bless you. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your holy name, God. Bless your wonderful name, God. There is no other God. There is no other power. There is no other name. You're the only one holy. God, you're the only one righteous. God, you're the strength of my life. My confidence is in you, God. My hope is in you, God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, hallelujah, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Praise your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You got your Bibles? Let's go to the book of Galatians. Hallelujah, Jesus. Galatians, the sixth chapter. Praise your name, God. Father, we give you praise. There is no God like my God. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. How will we wrong with you? The name of the Lord is above every name. The name of my God is above every name. He's the King of glory. He's the great I am. He's the wonderful counselor. He's the conquering king. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Glory to the Lamb of God. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. We started a study in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to continue that study tonight, today. Talking about the kingdom of heaven and seed. We've been studying how the word of God is the seed. And the Bible says Jesus was teaching about the kingdom. And he talked about how the kingdom, in the kingdom, the seed of the word is sown into the heart of man. And we talked about how in the kingdom of heaven, uh, I gave you uh, some key principles. I'm not going to go over all of them, but just a few of them. One of the things that I talk, talk, or told you or talked with you about the kingdom is that in the kingdom of heaven, in the kingdom of God, there are no limits. There are no limits in the kingdom of heaven. And we have uh, been brought, the Bible says in Colossians, the first chapter, the Bible says we have been brought or we have been translated into the kingdom of heaven. That every Christian now have their residency in the kingdom. That you are no longer a citizen of the world, but that you are now a citizen of heaven. And that your life is now in the kingdom. And since your life is in the kingdom, the Bible says we ought to learn how to live in the kingdom. Because that's where our life is. One scripture says, set your affections on the things that are above where your life is. That's where your life is. Your affections should not be in the earth because your life is no longer in the earth. Another thing we talked about is that how, I don't care what situation you're in, if you have faith and the seed, you can overcome anything. If you got the faith in your heart and the seed in your hand, you can overcome anything. Because faith makes you a victor. Matter of fact, the Bible says, it is my faith that has overcome the world. The Bible says, anything that is born of God or whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Your faith, your confidence in God, my dependency, my trust, my assurance in the word of God, that God cannot lie. You must be convinced that God cannot lie. You must be convinced that God cannot lie. He does not have the ability to lie. If God said it, then it is so. Amen. If God said it, then it is so. It doesn't matter if I cannot see it. It doesn't matter if I cannot feel it. If God said it, then it is so. His word cannot return void. Matter of fact, the Bible says that his word is living, is quick, is powerful. His word has life. His word is moving right now on my behalf. This is one of the reasons why it's important for you to keep the word of God in your mouth. It's because the word of God is a living thing. It's a living. He says my word is living. It's 
it is. That's why you have to keep it in your mouth. It's working. When you land in your bed, the word is working on your behalf. When you're driving down the road, the word is working on your behalf. The word of God is always working. It's living. It's powerful. He says, my word cannot return void. When I send it out, it will perform. What will perform? The word will. The word will perform whatever it is I sent it to do. That means if it wasn't that before I said it, by the time my word gets there, it would be whatever I said it was because my word will perform whatever it is. I talked to y'all even a little bit in Sunday school about how powerful God is, about how awesome, how magnificent and wonderful, how much glory and grace and power and ability God has so that whatever he touches is filled with his presence. Whatever God touches is filled with his The reason why God's word is so powerful is because it's his word. Yes. It's because it, it, that's the difference between him and me. His word is so powerful because it's his word. His word is filled with his glory. It's filled with his power. Anything that comes from his mouth, anything that released, that is released out of him has so much power and authority that it will go and perform whatever. He says, my word cannot come back to me void because it carries my glory. It carries my might, my muscle, my ability. And wherever I send my word, it's going to do exactly what I send it to do because my word is quick and powerful. It's not a dead thing. It's a living thing. It's not a weak thing, he says. It's a powerful thing. And so because of that, I can trust in his word. I can have confidence in his word. Another thing we talked about, how the word of God, and because the word of God is a, 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 a done thing, we can have an expected end. We can have an expected end. That when we're walking with God, we can have an expected end. We're not hoping that we win, and we're not wishing that something good will happen. We're not wishing that we're going to be healed. We're not wishing that some good stuff is going to happen in our life. We're not hoping that our children will turn out all right because we have a sure thing. We have a sure thing. The word of God is a sure thing. Because the word of God is settled in heaven, we have an expected end. I know that this is going to happen because the kingdom does not change. I know it's going to come to pass because the kingdom does not change. Whatever God said is going to come to pass. And so I can put my foot down and trust and wait on that because I know the word of God cannot fail. Yeah. I have an expected end. I'm not hoping. I'm not wishing. I'm not, I'm not rolling the dice hoping something good happened, but I have confidence that what God said was going to happen is going to happen because his word cannot return void. Another thing I want to, uh, before we get into our main part today, my heart is so vast that I can plant all of the harvest that I desire. However much harvest you desire to have in your life, you can plant it in your heart. There is no limit. You can plant healing, you can plant prosperity. You can even, we even talked about how I can plant my children's future yeah. into my heart. That's how big your spirit is. Your spirit is able to take the word of God, not just for you, but even your grandchildren, even your children. You can take that word concerning them and plant that word in your heart. And that to fruition. Some of us are in here right now today, not because of what we did, but because of what somebody else did and what somebody else prayed and what somebody else believed about you. Amen. 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 There are some people who are saved right now today because somebody else planted a word in their heart about your life. And the word that your grandma or your mother or your cousin or somebody else planted in their heart about you is what brought you in. Yes. You didn't come on being by yourself. Somebody planted something yes. in their life, in their spirit about you. Yes. And that word found you in the club. That word found you in the street. Yes. That word found you over there and over here and brought you into the body of Christ. Yes. Now the same way somebody else planted word in their heart about you, you can plant word in your heart about your children and about your grandchildren, about your cousin, about your nephew, because you have the ability to have an effect on others by the word that you will plant in your heart about them. 
plant a word in your heart about somebody else and watch it bring forth fruit in their life. Watch it be a blessing in their life. That's how big, that's how rich the soil of your heart is. It's just that rich. Not only will it be a blessing for you, it'll be a blessing for somebody else. Amen. 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 All right, come on, let's get into today's uh, 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 portion of understanding of, uh, uh, of Scripture. Let's go once again to the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter. We're going to start at verse number 6, Galatians 6, chapter, verse number 6. I have some word planted in my spirit about the city of Pompano. I have planted some word in my spirit about this community, and I believe that I will see the harvest of that word. I believe I will see the harvest of that word that this ministry will be a blessing to the city of Pompano. Amen. Amen. Wow. That this ministry will be a blessing to the city of Pompano. That we will have organizations, that we will have uh, 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 elements of this ministry that will go out into the community and touch different areas of this community. We will be a great influence in the city of Pompano. I believe that. I planted that word in my heart. I water that word on a regular basis. I speak life to that word on a regular basis. That we are the light of the world. We are the city that cannot be here. We have an answer for the problems of the world. We, Church of the Lord Jesus, have an answer for the problems of the world. His name is Jesus. Yes. All right. I don't care what you're going through, he can bring you out. Yes. I don't care what problems you got going on in your life. If you take the word of God and give yourself to the word of God, it will change your life. Yes. It will raise your child. It will raise your marriage. It will raise your finances. I know the answer. I know the answer. Yes. Oh God. I know that I found the answer. Yes. I found yes. the answer to every one of life's problems. Yes. I found the answer. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is the answer. Yes, he, he don't have the answer. He is, he is the yes. answer. Yes, Come on, let's get into it. Uh, today's word. Once again, we're talking about kingdom, and we're talking about the seed of the kingdom. God has given us seed that we might sow seed, and that that seed will bring forth fruit in our life. The Bible says some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Now, we also understand that if you don't sow any seed, you don't have no right to look for a harvest. Harvest belongs only to those who sow seeds. The word of God cannot be something that is optional in your life. If the word of God is optional in your life, then you are in trouble. Because you cannot have a harvest without a seed being sown. The word of God must not be optional. It must be mandatory. I must have the word. Matter of fact, Jesus said man cannot live by bread alone. He ain't going to make it. If all he got is natural bread, Jesus said he ain't going to make it. He's not going to make it. He says he needs the word that is proceeding out of my mouth. The word proceeding means it is continually coming out. It is not a one-time thing. It is a continual flow. He says you must be connected to the continual flow of what's coming out of my mouth if you're going to make it. If you're going to survive in this world, Jesus said you must be in tune to the continual flow of the living word that is proceeding or coming from my mouth. You can't be uh, trying to survive on yesterday's bread. You need bread for today. You need fresh manna. You can't, you, can't, you can't survive tomorrow on yesterday's bread. You're going to need fresh bread tomorrow. What you get today you are, uh, is for today. Tomorrow you got to get up and seek him again. Amen. Because every day you need fresh bread. All right. Verse number six is where we're going to start. Once again, we're talking about the king.